So the very first thing that you need to do is, of course, go ahead and install Node. Once you have done that, the next thing I want you to do is to create a folder and create a JavaScript file. In the JavaScript file, use one of the samples that you find in the Edge.js GitHub page or just code along with the demonstration I'm going to show you soon. Afterwards, go ahead and install Edge using npm and after we've done that, you're basically ready to go. Just go ahead and run the JavaScript file from the node command prompt. Now, let's take a look at the demonstration starting with a very simple hello world. As I showed you in the beautiful animation, which I didn't do, I do have some whiteboarding skills, but I'm trying out some new software, so I did use software to create that whiteboarding animations. However, as you saw, the first thing that you need to do to get this up and running is go to nodejs.org and then go ahead and download Node. And we're gonna go do that. I'm just gonna grab it quickly. I'm on a good network here, so that went pretty fast. Just go run and then of course you're going to be asked if you accept terms and in the license agreement which we all love to read, right? Next, next, next and next and install. And it should be up and running in just a few seconds. Once we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and open up the node command prompt and we're going to go ahead and grab edge as well. Before we do that, I want to show you one thing I did in the meanwhile. Let me zoom out a little bit. I've gone ahead and created a folder that I just called Node and Edge. And I've gone ahead and just written some stuff here. As you can see here, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm requiring Edge. This is how you grab the Edge module, which we're going to go ahead and download in just a second. We are simply just doing a hello world and what you see here, the comment, is just a syntax. This is the way that you can use C-sharp in JavaScript with Edge.js. I'm sure I could word that a little bit better, but I think you understand what I mean. I'm going to show you some other examples in other videos, but I'm just keeping it really simple here. And I'm just using the example that is on the GitHub page for Edge.js. So the next thing that happens afterwards is we go ahead and actually use hello world and we're going to see if this actually works here now. So what we're going to go ahead and do is go ahead and open the command prompt for Node.js. And once I've done that, I'm just going to make sure that I actually go and navigate to the folder where we are. And once I'm in there, I'm going to go ahead and install Edge. And the way I go ahead and do that is you simply write npm install Edge, hit enter and just let it work a little bit in the background. Let's see if everything went well. Looks like it. We got only greens and good to go. So the next thing we're going to do is go ahead and execute or sorry, run this JavaScript file. And the way you do that is by simply typing node and then the name of the file, hello.js and we hit enter and as you can see it works and it's amazing it says dotnet welcomes javascript not good enough do you want another example of course you want to i'm going to show you a much better and more exciting example right now all right let's have a look at a better example where we're actually doing something that we care about doing say that you wanted to do some compression if you were to do this in a console application in C-sharp, it would look like something like this, of course, with a little bit of error handling. Let me make this a little bit larger so you can actually see. This is fairly straightforward. Now, how do we go ahead and use this in Node with Edge.js? Well, that's quite simple. Let's have a look at the code for that. I've gone ahead and even changed the, the syntax highlighting here and changed the colors a little bit because the other stuff was too difficult to read. But as you can see, as you can see, we are more or less using the exact same code that we were using in our console application, of course, with a few tweaks. So let's talk about those. At the top, we're using the hash R syntax to load additional assemblies. This kind of reminds us a little bit of the Roslyn way of doing things, if you are familiar with that. Another thing that you might have noticed is that we are using and creating a task. The reason we are doing that is because we don't want to block the thread. So the next step from here is to actually check that this works. So we're going to go ahead and try to compress a file inside the folder we've created. 
as you can see, I've tried this a couple of times before, just double checking, and I just cheekily just return null because if you don't return anything, it's not going to work, and you're going to get these really, really mysterious errors, which you're not going to like. And as you can see here, I'm, I'm actually just going to go ahead and delete the, the old ones when I was just checking that things work. We have just a simple text file, very, very tiny one. And I'm going to go ahead and do the compression. And as you can see, if we go back now, it actually succeeded. Yay! I don't have any decompression uh, in that code example. So I just wanted to show you a little bit more. We are still kind of at the hello stage or hello world stage with this. So I'm going to upload more videos and we're going to take a deeper dive and take a good look at this. But hopefully this was enough to get you excited. I know I'm excited. So therefore, there will be more content, videos, blog posts, and whatnot. Make sure you leave a comment, and if you have questions, I'll do my very best to answer those. Take care. Bye.